Hello fellow SREs, welcome back to SRE with Ben. Today we are going to talk about an exciting topic, Dapp Dynamics, that is business transactions. Let's get started. To understand uh, what a business transaction is, first let's understand what is a transaction in a web application. Any web application you take, there are certain uh, functionalities that the web application offers, right? Like your login, order checkout, or search for an order. So these functionalities have a direct impact on your business. Since um, if a functionality like a login is not working, then your user is not able to log into your application and place orders. And if he's not placing orders, your business is not making any money. That is a direct impact to your business. Such functions which have a direct impact on your business are considered as uh, business transactions. Now let's learn about how to uh, monitor business transactions using Apti by taking a use case. Let me consider myself as the owner of a JPEG store and uh, this is my web application. And I have uh, certain uh, functionalities this application offers that is to um, order pets from online store. So I have one functionality that is to sign into the store. Then I have various other capabilities to, to view pets and to place orders on them. So I'm going to place order and I'm going to do checkout, right? Also, I can see my account and uh, what are the orders that I have placed. Now I want App Dynamics to be used to monitor this application and monitor uh, these tra crucial transactions for me, login and uh, checkout order. So let me go ahead and do that. I have already instrumented a Java app agent for this application. If you have not watched that video, I recommend you watch it so that um, the application gets connected to my App Dynamics controller. Once my Java agent is uh, connected to my App Dynamics controller, this is the landing page for me once I open the application. So you can see here by default App Dynamics has detected um, how many nodes I have and any backends. So backend is a database in my case, it's an in-memory database. So to view business transactions, you will have to go and click here on the left side, business transactions. Here, AppD lists a set of uh, transactions that it has auto-detected. And I can see only one transaction has been uh, listed here, that is JPET store slash transactions. But if you see in my application, there is differentiation for each activity. For example, if I go and uh, check out something, I can see in my uh, transaction, it is cart action. This JPEG store slash actions is not very descriptive. So I am unable to see what are the functionalities that is happening in my application. Basically, I'm unable to differentiate between the crucial transactions. Why is that so? That is because in App Dynamics, when you enable auto transaction detection, App Dynamics always consider the first two elements of your URI. So in my case, the first two elements of my URI after my domain is JPEG store slash actions. That is why App Dynamics is grouping all these transactions, regardless of what transaction it is, whether it is order or cart or cat catalog or any transaction, it is grouping it under JPEG store slash actions. This is not an ideal case for me. So let me go ahead and first configure App Dynamics to capture transactions that I want. To do that, all you have to do is either click on configure here and it will take you to a section called transaction deduction under instrumentation or you can scroll down on the left left bar and click on configuration and click on instrumentation and go to transaction deduction. So here you have a list of uh, transaction deduction rules that have been configured for various types of app agents for example java, .NET, PHP, Python and etc. So first let me go ahead and identify which is the auto discovery rule that is capturing my tra transactions and grouping it. In my case, uh, it is this rule. So I'm going to open it and I'm going to edit this. So if I see in the rule configuration, when I scroll down, I can see under servlet section, the, co the transaction configuration is use the first two segments of the URL, right? But for me, the first two segments is not very uh, useful information. So, so I'm going to change it to use first three segments of the URL since I want to capture the information after these two segments because this is what is making sense to me. This is how you can uh, change the default behavior of your uh, business transaction capturing mode. And I'm going to click on save. 
Now, once I changed the default behavior to capture three se segments, and when I generated some load up on my application, I can see now um, all the business transactions that I required for me have been captured. So I can see uh, it's capturing the third segment also. So now it's making more sense to me. So I can see what is the uh, order transaction, what is the cart transaction, and what is the catalog transaction. Now it is very clear for me how each of my business transaction is performing, right? So I can see what is the response time of my transaction and uh, what is the number of calls per minute, any errors, any um, slow transactions and things like that. So this can give me a gist of how my application is performing and how the various business transactions are performing, right? So why does AppD uh, default transaction reduction to two segments? Because in an enterprise application, your URL can have n number of uh, URIs. For example, you can have order slash one, order slash two, based on the unique ID of the order. If AppD tries to capture the complete URL, there are going to be n number of uh, transactions captured, and it will be very difficult to identify which transaction is needed for you and which is not needed for you. Because of that, AppD always uh, uses two capture first two segments of the uh, URL as a transaction. Now let's go ahead and understand what information AppD is capturing for a, any deducted transaction. So for that, let me to go and double click on the business transaction. And I can see in the dashboard, there is a flow map showing uh, which node this transaction is initiated from and what is the backend it's using. This is an in-memory database. I can see uh, what is the number of calls and what is the number of calls per minute. What is the response time for this transaction and what is the header rate? And if I uh, scroll on the right side, I can see something called as a transaction scorecard. This gives basic details of the transaction on how it is performing. And uh, if there are any slow calls or any stall calls or any errors, th that type of information can be uh, seen from here as an overview. Now I can see my normal is not 100% and I can see there are some very slow calls. So let me go ahead and investigate it. Why uh, transactions are slow. So how do you investigate why your business transaction is slow or why your application is performing slow? This is where we get to the part of application performance management and uh, how AppDynamics is helpful for, for us. So how our app, the app agent works is it injects itself into the application code and it tracks the application code from end to end, from when the thread starts to when it ends. Every time any code block is executed in an application, the AppD agent knows about it. It's like in God mode. What it does is it captures something called as a transaction snapshot periodically. That can be configured as well. For example, any time a login uh, transaction is happening, the AppD agent is capturing those uh, transaction snapshot and sending it to AppDynamics. So to understand why my business transaction is slow, first let me go and investigate a transaction snapshot. For that, let me go ahead and click on transaction snapshots. Here I can see a list of transaction snapshots which have been captured by the AppD agent and sent to controller. And if you see, uh, this indicates that this snapshot, this transaction was normal and this indicates very slow. So let me go ahead and verify it. Then we have the execution time. What is the latency? What is the URL on which this business transaction happened? And what is the tire and which node? So I can see there is one transaction with the marker saying it's very slow. So let me go ahead and investigate it. And also I see the execution time is higher than usual. Hence AppDynamics has marked it as very slow. To investigate it, double click on the transaction. Here I can see a brief about what is the transaction and uh, where, uh, what are the backends, which node it's running on. And on the left side, I can see uh, potential issues that might be causing the transaction to take time and what is the response time of each call. For example, these are all uh, Java method invocations or class invocations. So I can see what is the response time of each of those class invocation. So I can see a database call also taking too much time. Now I want to see how this transaction happens and which at which exact point the issue is happening. For that, I'll have to click on drill down. Once you click on drill down, you land in a section called as the call graph. This is the complete trace of your application request. It gives you a detailed uh, snapshot of a single transaction in your application from start to end. 
It also gives details regarding your function calls, database calls, and external service calls, etc. We will be going through the call graph in details in the coming sections. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.